caught in the cinematic web of Ship of Fools. No, not literally, but metaphorically. The 1965 movie isn't your typical voyage, it's packed with funny, shocking, and downright sad moments that'll keep you glued to your seat. So, when was the first time you watched this gem? Whether it's a recent discovery or a nostalgic trip down memory lane, the movie has a way of staying with you. What makes it a lasting symbol of the industry? The answer lies in its timeless appeal and the way it mirrors the complexities of human nature. Now, brace yourself for an exploration of the funny, the shocking, and the downright sad. The characters on board may be on a literal ship, but metaphorically, they're navigating the turbulent waters of human relationships. Before we delve into these cinematic waters, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you. And with that, keep your eyes on the screen. There's a lot more to unfold. Funny, shocking, and sad facts are just around the corner. Get ready for a cinematic journey that's bound to leave a lasting impression. Stay tuned for more. The 1965 film Ship of Fools, directed by Stanley Kramer, made a lasting impact on both the cinematic landscape of its time and the broader popular culture that followed. It received mixed reviews upon its initial release, with some praising its ensemble cast and thought-provoking narrative, while others critiqued its pacing and perceived lack of cohesion. Despite the varied critical reception, the movie left an indelible mark on popular culture. Its exploration of societal issues and human nature resonated with audiences, sparking conversations and reflections on the complexities of relationships and societal norms. The impact went beyond the silver screen, seeping into discussions about morality and human behavior. The film's legacy is further evident in the spin-offs and adaptations that followed. While not directly spawning sequels, the themes explored inspired subsequent works that delved into similar social and psychological landscapes. The influence can be seen in the way filmmakers approached storytelling and character development, contributing to a shift in the narrative tone of films produced in the following years. Merchandising related to the film, such as posters, books, and other memorabilia, became sought after collectibles among enthusiasts. The enduring popularity of these items is a testament to the lasting impact of the movie on the cultural zeitgeist of its era. In the world of cinema, its influence paved the way for a new wave of thought, provoking narratives that sought to challenge societal norms and delve into the intricacies of human relationships. While not achieving blockbuster success, the movie left a mark that transcended box office numbers, establishing itself as a piece of cinematic history that continues to be studied and appreciated. In conclusion, the 1965 film may not have been universally acclaimed during its time, but its impact on popular culture, reflected in subsequent works and cultural discussions, solidifies its place in the annals of cinematic history. In Ship of Fools, Vivian Lee's final film, a notable scene involves her Charleston, where the synchronization between her movement and Ernest Gold's post-production scoring creates an intriguing blend. The brash ragtime melody contrasts with a lone, melancholy note for strings, alternating unexpectedly, adding depth to Lee's portrayal of fleeting sanity. Lee passed away on July 8, 1967, at 53, making Ship of Fools her cinematic swan song. Lee Marvin initially declined the role of Bill Tenney, considering Catherine Ann Porter's novel too highbrow for his style. Director Stanley Kramer, recognizing Marvin's career descent, persuaded him to diversify. Marvin not only transitioned successfully, but also won the Best Actor Oscar that year, though not for this film. This transition marked a turning point for Marvin's career, showcasing his adaptability beyond supporting roles. Ship of Fools stands as a testament to the late Vivian Lee's artistry and indirectly contributed to Lee Marvin's career resurgence, ultimately earning him an Oscar. In Ship of Fools, the narrative subtly alludes to the German federal election of 1933, a pivotal moment when the Nazis secured 43.9% of the vote, marking a significant rise from the previous election. This historical context adds depth to the film's backdrop, shedding light on the political landscape that influenced the character's journeys. Notably, when Lowenthal mentions Kaiser and Victoria's funeral, he refers to the wife of Kaiser Friedrich Wilhelm and the mother of Kaiser Wilhelm II. Victoria's lineage, connected to Queen Victoria of England, weaves a familial thread into the intricate fabric of Ship of Fools, underscoring the interconnectedness of European royalty during that era. 
As a side note, Michael Dunn, a 311 dwarf actor, earned an Oscar nomination, making him the sole actor of his stature to achieve this recognition as of 2016. His presence in the film underscores the inclusivity of Ship of Fools, breaking norms, and providing visibility to underrepresented talents. These historical and casting nuances contribute to the film's rich tapestry, allowing audiences to engage with the characters on a deeper level. Ship of Fools, beyond its cinematic merit, serves as a reflective piece on a bygone era, capturing the essence of a time marked by political upheaval and societal intricacies. Catherine Ann Porter, the author of the acclaimed novel, expressed strong disapproval for the cinematic adaptation of her work. She found the film to be vulgar and shallow, deviating significantly from her vision. The ensemble cast of the movie boasts four Oscar winners Vivian Lee, Lee Marvin, Simone Signoret, and Jose Furr. Additionally, four Oscar nominees, namely Michael Dunn, Oscar Werner, Lilia Scala, and George Segal, further solidify the film's star-studded lineup. Heinz Ruhmann, not of Jewish descent, actively opposed the Nazi regime and eagerly took on a role in the film, showcasing his anti-Nazi stance. The movie's blend of seasoned Oscar winners and nominees, along with Ruhmann's principled involvement, adds layers to its narrative. These elements contribute to the film's depth, providing audiences with a diverse and talented cast to navigate the complex themes. In summary, Ship of Fools faced criticism from its original author, Catherine Ann Porter, while assembling a remarkable ensemble cast that included both Oscar winners and nominees. Heinz Ruhmann's anti-Nazi convictions also played a noteworthy role in shaping the film's dynamic. It's a testament to the film's intricacies and the challenges faced during its production. Oscar Werner secured an unexpected Best Actor nomination, despite being fifth billed in the film. Director Stanley Kramer strategically utilized soft focus for Vivian Lee's character throughout the movie, transitioning to a sharp focus during her impactful Charleston sequence. Lee, grappling with depression and alcoholism, initially clashed with Lee Marvin, objecting to his alcohol-scented breath. Surprisingly, the two eventually formed an unlikely friendship. These behind-the-scenes dynamics, along with Werner's nomination, provide intriguing insights into the making of the movie. The meticulous cinematography choices and the unexpected camaraderie between Lee and Marvin offer a unique perspective on the film's production, shedding light on the challenges and dynamics within the cast. Oscar Werner and Jose Furrer collaborated on a similar film titled Voyage of the Damned, depicting a boatload of refugees heading back to Germany before the outbreak of the Second World War. Remarkably, this marked Werner's final appearance on screen. Vivian Lee, known for her iconic role in a streetcar named Desire, returned to the big screen after almost 15 years. Her earlier films during this interim period included The Deep Blue Sea and The Roman Spring of Mrs. Stone. Director Stanley Kramer, who directed Spencer Tracy in his final three movies, including Judgment at Nuremberg and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, often received visits from Tracy on the set of Ship of Fools. In summary, the movie holds historical significance as it aligns with later collaborations, marks a renowned actress's return, and connects to the final movies directed by someone who was visited regularly by a legendary actor. Stanley Kramer, the director of Ship of Fools, faced challenges during production. Initially considering filming on an actual ship, the logistical difficulties led to the construction of a ship set at Columbia Studios, spanning four sound stages with four levels. Special effects at Paramount involved dismantling the set into 44 sections, each measuring 16 x 12 feet and transporting them as reported in the 2 August 1964 Los Angeles Times. Kramer's collaboration with Oscar Werner had its difficulties. The actor's refusal to perform in the bar scene stage left led to a reconstruction of the set to accommodate him. Notably, Catherine Hepburn, the initial choice for the aging Southern Belle role, withdrew due to Spencer Tracy's ailing health. Vivian Lee stepped in, marking her return to the big screen after nearly 15 years. These behind-the-scenes details provide insights into the challenges faced by Stanley Kramer during the production of Ship of Fools, highlighting the pragmatic decisions made in creating the film 